despite not succeeding in the aerospace industry with the Starliner spacecraft. At least, Boeing has smashed the record in aviation with its best-selling 737 aircraft. The Boeing 737 is ubiquitous since 1965. The American aviation giant has taken orders for a whopping 15,737s. More notably, over the last three decades, an average of about 300 of its 737 aircraft have been produced each year. 300 aircraft per year is a staggering number. But what about 300 rockets per year? This is certainly crazy. However, according to Elon Musk, SpaceX can make that happen. So what difficulties will SpaceX encounter on the journey to reach its goal? And how do they plan to overcome those obstacles? In 2020, Elon Musk revealed the details of his plan to build a city of 1 million people on Mars by 2050. Building 100 starships per year gets to 1,010 years, or 100 megatons per year, or maybe around 100k people per Earth Mars orbital sink. He also added that that's the goal. 100 starships per year means completing one spacecraft every 72 hours, meaning three days for each spacecraft to be completed. Four years have passed with so many changes. Starship is no longer a flying water tower, but has become a complete rocket with incredible power. 2023 is an unforgettable year for the space community as they get the chance to witness the vehicle launch not once, but twice. With each test, Starship gets one step closer to Mars. And now SpaceX's South Texas team is progressing towards the third full-scale Starship test flight, which could be weeks away. With those milestones complete, Elon Musk is more confident in upgrading his goal. To achieve Mars colonization in roughly three decades, we need ship production to be 100 per year, but ideally rising to 300 a year, Musk wrote on X. What's clear is Musk's goal of establishing a settlement on Mars will require rocket travel to be nearly as routine as air travel. Perhaps Musk wants his Starship to be like Boeing's 737 aircraft. Over the last three decades, Boeing has built an average of about 300 of its best-selling 737 aircraft per year. But if he increases the Starship production frequency by three times, that means the difficulties and challenges in the future will be multiple times. With the target of 300 starships per year, SpaceX will need to meet the accelerated production demand, completing a limited number of starships in just 30 hours. Meanwhile, the Boca Chica team has now demonstrated that it can complete one a week. If they double that, then they can build around 100 per year. That would require more sites to build starships and to supply super heavy boosters or launch pads, possibly in Florida close to the KFC launch site and the Port Canaveral site as they head out to launch more starships into orbit. That would put starship production totals at 100 each year. In 30 years, 2050, they would have their 3,000 starships. However, to reach the point of 300 ships per year, well, they will focus on further optimization of production lines. Not mentioned to the fact that currently, they only focus on producing prototypes which is easier than production. Elon Musk also confirmed this. Prototypes are easy. Production is hard. It makes sense. Doing something in the lab is one thing. Making it successful in reality is a whole different matter. The next step is about the rocket engine. It is actually the Raptor engines that are the limiting build component for the number of usable starships, since they are both the most complex and the most expensive subsystem in the Starship and its super heavy booster. For the Virgin 1 prototypes, Starship takes 6 Raptors and Super Heavy takes 33. In the future, those numbers will likely increase. That means the majority of engines will go into the larger number of Starship vehicles that spend most of their time coasting in between Earth and Mars. 100 Starships produced each year will require at least 600 Raptors to be produced each year, F-20 Super Heavy Boosters, which can be turned around and launched in an hour with another starship, are produced each year. Then, that adds 660 Raptors to the production schedule each year. Call it 1,260 total per year, to give a margin for spares. For the goal of 300 ships per year, the final result in this case is 2,460 at least. 
These production numbers for full flow stage combustion engines are something no one has done. Like much of what SpaceX does, these numbers have been surpassed for smaller and lower pressure liquid propellant engines in the past. Still, they may well be the most difficult part of production scheduling for SpaceX. Next, before continuing, if you found these informations useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications bell so you're always stay tuned with any of our upcoming SpaceX and the world of space videos. And now, let's go back to today's episode. So what have they been doing to solve those problems? At a glance, we see SpaceX's current production is quite slow with 7 days per vehicle, but it is because they are still in the development stage of the rocket. Take for an example the case of Cybertrucks. Tesla designed and built the first Cybertruck 5 years ago. It is taking them this long to figure out how they can get the product and all of its components to a place where it can be effectively mass-produced at an acceptable cost and high volume. SpaceX is in the same position as Tesla was a few years ago. Thus, good things take time. To trace against time, the company has been applying at a rate of design methodology which is demonstrated more effectively than the traditional approach. Instead of extensive planning and design work up front, SpaceX opts for a more dynamic iterative design methodology. This involves building a prototype quickly, testing it, analyzing the results, and using the learned data to improve subsequent designs. The cycle of repeated numerous times, allowing for accelerated development and real-world testing of design hypotheses, in parallel with the rocket construction, they have begun to expand the facility and enhance production efficiency. In 2022, SpaceX kicked up construction of Phase 1 of the Giga Factory, so far, according to SpaceX's star base director, Kathy Litters. The factory's progress is in the middle of a major construction activity. I mean, we have a million square foot factory coming online and being built right now. We have additional homes being built and a village. By building the Giga Factory, SpaceX is expected to create miracles in the same way that Tesla's Giga Factory did. Tesla the world's largest all-electric car manufacturer, once again increased its potential animal manufacturing output, recently exceeding 2,350,000 units, according to quarter 3 of the 2023 financial report. That's an increase of 325,000 compared to the quarter 2 report. The year-over-year -year increase amounted to roughly 450,000. This time, the change is associated with the Giga Shanghai plant, where the installed capacity increased by 200,000 from over 750,000 to over 950,000 per year. And with the Giga Texas plant, where the Tesla Cybertruck's installed capacity was estimated at over 125,000 units per year. With Starship's future factories, many even expect that the result is even more impressive. Musk lived through production hell at Tesla in 2017 and 2018, building up factories, changing processes, spending many sleepless nights, and going through all manner of mental agony. The efforts have paid off as he could get and apply the well-worth lessons learned from Tesla's assembly line to SpaceX, and that helps their workers avoid burnouts. They will work three 12-hour days and then have a four-day weekend. Then. They will work four 12-hour shifts with a three-day weekend. Thus, with four shifts, the Boca Chica site can operate at full capacity 24 hours a day. Seven days a week, SpaceX has been throwing in hot meals every three to four hours for free. In short, the goal of 300 starships per year seems very challenging for SpaceX. However, with the current pace and practical experience applied at Tesla, we fully hold out hope that no matter how difficult the problem is, SpaceX can still solve it. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications feature so you do not miss out on any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to see you in the next time.